Good morning, students. Welcome back to the classes. Now, we'll continue our lesson in history. We were doing pastoralists in the modern world. We have reached part three: pastoralism in Africa. Just like the pastoralists of India, the African pastoralists. Take the example of Maasai. Their lives were equally affected. Their lives were changed dramatically due to the colonial rule and their policy and their acts, which were implemented for their own benefit. They never thought about the pastoralists and the native people of these regions. Let's talk about now the Maasai. Previously, in our previous class, we have talked about different pastoralist communities of Africa. We don't have to read all of them. About all of them, we'll read about one community that is Maasai cattle herders. And once we learn about them, we know everything about other communities as well. So now. The Maasai cattle herders mainly, especially, live in East Africa. They live in eastern side of Africa, where there is a vast grassland. With their population, they had a huge population. Altogether, we talked about there were 22 million pastoralists in Africa. In our previous class, we have talked about 22 million. Pastoralists, they depended on uh, animals. Some they do trade, combined with pastoralism, and so on. So now here, with their population in East Africa, three hundred thousand in Kenya. That's a big number, three lakhs. Three hundred thousand in Kenya, and. Another 150,000 in Tanzania. These are pastoralists. They live in two areas, Kenya and Tanzania. 300,000 in Kenya, 150,000 in Tanzania. They depended whole and soul on, towards on their cattle. Now here we can see how new laws took away their land. Once the British or the Europeans came there, not only the British, there were many Europeans. Once the Europeans came there, how new laws, they made certain laws, took away their land and restricted their movements. Their movements were also restricted, just like what was happening in India at that time. During drought, especially when it did not rain, during drought or scarcity of water, during these periods or years, their relationship was reshaped. Their relationship was also reset. How? During the dry season, during drought, they had very little area, small area to graze their huge number of cattle. They fought for the grassland. They fought among themselves. Here comes the survival of the fittest. Whoever is strong, they will graze the gra gra grazing land, and those who are weak, they are deprived of it. So their relationship also changed, reshaped their relationship. It grew, enmity grew between these Maasais because of the shortage of pasture lands. Now here, We'll talk about 3.1. Where have the grazing lands gone then? What happened to those grazing lands? Vast stretches of grassy land, grasslands. What happened to them? The colonial rulers, they took them. The best lands were taken over. And the Maasai were left with semi-arid regions, poor, having poor soil, having no water. Their main problem 
the Maasai herders and other communities, pastoralists, we'll talk about in general. The pastoralists, their main problem was the continuous loss of their grazing land. Continuous, their grazing lands were taken over continuously by one after another, by different, different colonizers. Number two, before colonial rule, before colonial rule, before the Europeans came there, before, Maasai land spread, stretched over vast area from Kenya to Tanzania. The Maasai land or the grazing land was stretched over a vast area of Kenya and Tanzania. There was no shortage of grass. They could keep as many as cattle as they can. How each Maasai owned thousands of cattle because there was no shortage of fodder, grass. The land was, the grazing land was vast, endless. So, during late 19th century, now the problem started. Once the colonizer came there, the problem started. During late 19th century, colonial powers, not only one, many colonial powers sliced up their grazing land. Sliced up means taken away one by one, part by part. Sliced up the region into different colonies. The grazing lands were divided among different colonizers or colonies. So the Maasai or the herders, you can say the cattle herders lost their grazing land. If not lost only, the best grazing lands were taken over. By 1885, Maasai land was cut into half. Maasai land was cut into half. Half, po half the portion was taken away, only half was remained. Cut into half with the boundary. Boundary was marked between British Kenya, the Kenya portion was taken over by the Britishers, and German Tanganyika. And the other remaining portion was taken over by Germans. So British and German took over their gra grazing land. The best grazing lands were taken over. They were left with poor choice. Their best grazing lands where they could find good fodder, good grass and water, that was taken over. And they were left with uh, dry, they were left with poor fodder, uh, having poor fodder, a land, semi-arid region. They were pushed into the semi-arid regions where they find it very difficult to find fodder and water for their animals. So their lives became very, very difficult. They find it very difficult to live and maintain their herd because each Maasai family had possessed huge number of cattle. So they find it very, very difficult to maintain their herd or keep their herd well fed because due to shortage of grass and fodder, because they were pushed into the dry, semi-arid regions. The best grazing grounds where they could find good green grass and water, they were taken away by these colonizers. So you see how their lives changed, not only in India, all over the world, these pastoralists find it very, very difficult to sustain maintain their livelihood because they whole and soul depended on their animals and cattle. So now we'll meet in our next class. We'll continue this. Some more are there. Lot of things are there. So we'll continue in our next class. And thank you for watching the video. Stay safe and continue your studies at home regularly and go through online portal every time, every day so that will proceed further. You will not have any problems later on. So that's all. So that you can, so you are able to answer any type of questions if you go through the portals every day. I will explain in detail part by part, not all at a time.
if I teach everything at a time in a nutshell, then you will find it very difficult what happened there, what was the cause, and how they managed, everything will be difficult. So, because in every paragraph there is different, different events and different things are there. So you cannot have everything at once. So that's all, now you go through it properly, you go through the title and go through this portion, go through this, then you will understand. So that's all for today. We'll meet in the next class. Thank you for watching the video. Stay safe and do your work properly. Thank you.